for the ages, I recommend falling back on the planet analogy I talked about in part 1. So we'll be keeping to a south pole, a north pole and an equator. And we'll be holding the cube like that and only rotating it like that. And additionally, the moves that we're going to make are mostly going to be equatorial slices, as well as outer moves that are mostly focused on inserting edges into the equator or taking out edges. Before starting the pair, any edges, I'm just going to talk about like the basic skills needed to insert or to take out an edge. So basically, what we do is imagine we have a slot, like this area here between the white and the green center. When we move this face up like that, this is slot up, and then so. This is the slot, and when we move it down, it's considered slot down. So how to insert an edge is, we will first move the slot up, and then we move this edge into the slot here, and then slot down, and now it's inside. Likewise, for taking out, it's just slot up, move this piece out of this slot here, and then slot down. So now we will actually start pairing edges. So, of course, it's easy to start with something that's already in the equator, so let's just look at this red and white and we want to pair up with the other red and white piece. So we want to insert it down here, slot up, move this piece into the slot, and then slot down. So now we have two red and whites in the equator, and there are two ways to insert the second red and white in the equator. What you're seeing now is the correct way, where one is on top and one is below. The other way, as you're seeing here, is the wrong way where you, you notice either both of them are on top, or you can get a case where both of them are below, this is not how we want to align the pieces. But if you ever encounter a situation where the edges just naturally come out aligned in the wrong way, you can perform this particular algorithm to flip one of them. And that two edges properly align, one on top and one below, we can now slice to match them up. And of course, we have broken up the centers, so we need to take the edge out of this slot before repairing the centers. Slot up, I move this edge out, and then slot down. Notice that by taking out an edge, it means that I have to pull in another edge. So before I take this edge out, I have to be careful about what is the other edge that I'm pulling in. I don't want to pull in another soft edge before I realign the centers, because that would mean I'm just breaking up work that has already been done previously. So instead, I'm going to choose an edge that is scrambled, and then I'll do a slot up, move this scramble edge into this slot and then slot down and then now when I realign the centers I'm breaking up an edge that I totally don't care about because it's scrambled in the first place so, so with that you can just continue to pair edges proceed to pair more and more edges you will notice that you will start running out of scramble edges in the top layer to replace your new soft edge with so what you can do instead is you can actually take like while the centers are aligned, you can intentionally take scrambled edges out of the equator by pulling soft edges into their spots like that. So again, just do it, do it more slowly. Slot up, move it into the slot, slot down. And the thing is, even if you slice and slice back like that, you are not actually dealing with the back slots. So even if you have soft edges stored in your back slots, you're not going to damage them. So let me just do this case of uh, white and orange. Slice, then I'll slot up, grab one of those scrambled edges and move it into that slot, and then slot down, and then slice back. Another thing you can do as you're running out of scrambled edges to replace your new soft edges is just to flip the cube over, because there are more scrambled pieces on the opposite side for you to solve. And you may need to flip the cube over more than once if you're looking for pieces. Another thing you can do some of the time is that, let's say I want to solve this green and red edge, so I slice. But instead of just randomly replacing with any edge, I notice that when I slice back, this orange and yellow is going to come exactly above this spot here. So when I replace this edge, I want to replace one with another orange and yellow, which is in this case that's the orange and yellow edge. And since this is on top, I need the orange and yellow to be below. So in this case, I will use the left side. So slot up, insert this edge, and slot down. So when I realign the centers, I actually solve two edges with that whole cycle of slicing, replace, and slice back. Finally, when you're down to the last two edges, you notice that if you were to insert this edge into the equator, so slot up, insert, slot down, and then you want to slice it, there's nothing on top. 
for you to replace it with and there's also nothing below for you to replace it with. So for the last two edges, the way you handle it is quite specific. Every other edge except the last two, the correct way to line them up is to see different colors or like different positions such as one on top and one below. But when you're just down to two edges left, what we want to do is to make them in the same color on both sides. So what we're going to do here is just flip one of them around and we can just use that same flip algorithm that I showed on screen. So like ideally what we want to do is we want to insert the two edges into the equator in this position where we see the same color on every side. And what we're going to do now is just slice. And now this edge here is made of pieces from both of the last two edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this edge around after we have sliced and then slice back. Doing that again, it's going to look something like this. Slice, flip, slice. At this stage, we have reduced the 4x4 into a 3x3 and we can get most of it solved with a 3x3 method. I'll be using a beginner method since this is a beginner tutorial and I'll be going through relatively fast because I'm going to assume that you can already solve a 3x3. So the first step is to get four edges on the bottom. In this case, I'm going to get it done on red. Second step is to insert all four corners. And for this step, we'll put the corner above the spot it requires and just do this algorithm as many times as necessary. The next step will be to take these edges that belong to the middle layer and insert them where they belong. So in this case, green and white will belong down here. At this stage, most beginner methods will branch into two different general approaches. I'll be going through both in this video. But right here, we have a problem. On the regular 3x3, three three, there will always be an even number of edges wrongly flipped. It can be 0, it can be 2, or it can be 4. You will never have an odd number unless somebody plucked a piece out of your cube and put it in wrongly. But on the 4x4, four four, it's possible to get this under natural circumstances, and we will need a special algorithm to flip one single edge. This algorithm is actually 17 moves long, but do not be intimidated because Almost every alternate move is a U2 and you really only need to just memorize like 9 of the moves. I'm also going to break this algorithm into 4 parts to make it easier to remember and each part actually has a distinct pattern. So even though I'm spelling out the notation on screen, I'm just going to describe what's going to happen to the cube. So the first part of the algorithm goes like RW U2 X. X is a rotation that turns the D phase into the new F, so it will look something like that. So I'm just going to execute the first part, RW U2 X. This is what I call the setup. The second part is up, up. The third part is down, down, down. And then the fourth part is up, down, down. And that will flip an itch that is right in front here. So the next step of solving the 3x3 three three will be to solve, like flip all four of the orange edges to be correct. After that, we can now move these edges to their correct positions. In this case, I got lucky and kind of skipped this step. And then after that, we'll be moving the corners to their correct location. But here, this is where we run into another problem. On the regular 3x3, you can never have two pieces individually swap. You always have something else. Unless, of course, somebody has disassembled your cube and reassembled it incorrectly. However, on the 4x4, it's possible to have every piece on the cube in its correct position except for two. So in this case, now of course, most of the cube is soft except the corners. And if you look at this corner, it's yellow and orange is in its correct place. Blue, white and orange is in its correct place, but these two like this corner, green, yellow, and orange belongs over here, and likewise to green, white, and orange. So we have an impossible case. To solve this case, we also need a special algorithm that will switch two opposite pieces. In this case, it's going to switch two opposite edges, which is not exactly going to solve our cube or bring us forward in the solve, but at least it's going to make this situation here solvable by normal 3x3 methods. This algorithm is relatively short, and uh, I personally have a fun way of doing it. So I'm going to spell the notation on the screen, but I'm going to show you how I do it. So grab the third layer like that and then turn both top layers then you turn your wrist over turn the top layer 
Now we want to turn this inner slice 180 degrees. So both slice and then one slice back. That's equivalent to turning that inner slice. And now again, I have the top layer, 180. Then I turn my wrist back like that and then turn both layers 180. And you have seen that this edge has switched with this edge. And now this is solvable by normal 3x3 means. Now going through the second approach of the beginner method, the first step is again to solve all four edges. So if we have an odd number, we need to do that this algorithm. The next step is to do this algorithm that twists three corners. So this algorithm will twist three corners like that, and it will actually preserve the one in the front left. And with that, we're going to twist all the colors to their correct positions. So in this case, I got one that's correctly flipped. So I'm going to preserve that in the front left, and I'm going to do this algorithm. Again, I still have one that's correctly flipped, so I'm going to preserve it here and do the algorithm again. And now I've twisted all the corners. The next step is going to be to solve all the corners. And in this case, we have a diagonal corner swap. You can tell by having every, every sticker here is a different color. We don't have a single pair that's the same color on both sides. So we just do this algorithm from any angle. Then, like now we have one pair that is correct, like relative to each other. So we're going to put that pair on the left, and we're going to do the algorithm which will switch these two corners. Now every corner is in its correct position. So if you have followed this particular three by three beginner method, you have realized that only four cases are possible when you reach the last step. One of them looks like this, one will look something like that, which is very similar to the first case, but it's, it's, you basically have three edges that are cycled, and then the remaining two cases involve one where every edge is an opposite color, and another one where all four are wrong, but you have two pairs that are switched with each other. So if you have encountered a pattern that is not among these four, then you basically have gotten an impossible case, and you can solve it with the algorithm that switches two opposite edges, which I demonstrated earlier with the other beginner method. It's basically this one. That's, I've turned that impossible case into a case that is legally possible on a 3x3. And it can be solvable by 3x3 methods.